Kia ora and welcome to the Timber Collection. A few weeks ago I had an email from Close to My Heart asking me to create a consultant workshop using the Timber Collection. Um, I was really excited and scared at the same time by this opportunity but what I want to share with you today is how I took the fun or the fast layout um, example that's in the instructions and how I turned this into what I call fabulous thanks to um, sort of one of our key people here in New Zealand, Megan Lawrence. She came up with fast, fun and fabulous. So what I'm just showing you here is the layout of the fast um, version of these instructions. And this uses the pattern from Make It From Your Heart Volume 3, pattern 12. But I switched the left and right pages over uh, for this workshop and this layout. So essentially stuck down, um, this is what you would have if you were doing the fast version. You can see how quickly that came together uh, using the cutout pieces that I had and just two of the die cuts here um, stuck onto the page. And with a little bit of journaling in the bottom right, there we go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this um, what I term the fabulous version. So I'm going to keep the same layout design, but I'm going to use this fabulous wood background. And I um, got these as part of the bulk pack. There are two of this wood grain in each of the paper collections for timber. Um, however, that would mean that you can't use the other side of this if you were um, wanting to use those. So have a chat with your consultant about getting hold of some of the bulk papers here. So what I'm going to do is keep this layout, but I'm going to add some stamped images um, onto the background here. So I've stamped these using the gnome, um, the gnome set that's in there. So this is Gnome Matter stamp and thin cut as well as the um, simple florals um, set. I fussy cut mine because I didn't have the die cuts for it um, but if you're clever you'll order them with the die cuts. I'm going to add some layers behind my main photograph here. So this is a 6 by 4 photograph and I'm going to put some of our vellum um, in behind it just to add a bit more of that um, or to bring that waterfall kind of misty feel that you get um, when you're standing near a waterfall into this uh, layout. But it just seems to soften or it adds another dimension without adding too much colour into the layout. So I'm going to also bring in the mix-in. So this is a craft and spotty mix-in here. And I'm going to tuck this in behind the photograph as well, just to feature in on this one. Now I chose this photo as the main one to do as a 6 by 4 um, it is. It was June when this photograph was taken. We had just come out of um, a stay at home um, or safe at home lockdown kind of order. And one of my daughters, the middle daughter, was heading um, back up to the North Island to continue with her studies and her internship um, after coming home for the lockdown. And both girls took the advantage to go on one of our local walks. So while this timber collection does have a very um, outdoor beer kind of uh, feel, and we don't have beers here in New Zealand, I um, feel that it still gives that sense of being in the outdoors, even though the particular outdoors that it's highlighting aren't, um, I guess, New Zealand outdoors or Australian either. Um, yeah, so anyway, so I'm now also trimming off the zip strips and I'm adding, I'm trimming up some other layers because I'm going to add some more layers tucked in on the right page here using these strips that I am cutting off from the mix-ins. Um, the mix-ins are great too, not only do they have um, the, a great pattern on one side, they're a great pattern on the other side as well. I often purchase two packs of the mix-ins each time because I want to be able to use each paper, not just um, the ones that are in there because of the double-sided nature of them. So I've cut those strips off there. Um, oh, and I'm just playing around here with the different colours to see whether I wanted to bring anything else out um, and looking at whether the navy's perhaps where I want to um, take this. And part of that is looking at the photo and thinking, well, what makes the picture stand out? because that's a key part of the story, not the pretty colours on the papers. So I have layered up the um, papers behind there as well, um, and I'm going to tuck them in behind. Now I'm not, um, 
wanting the papers to be straight. When we're out in the outdoors, it's not um, completely tidy and, and neat. There is a little bit of mess and chaos, and that's what I'm trying to create here as I purposefully um, angle these background papers so they're not uh, quite perfect or not a perfect square. But I want the photo to still be um, straight, I guess, in the final thing. Now, I'm tearing up the... Um, I guess the feature paper from this timber collection. I just want to roughen it up. Um, I don't want those straight lines anymore. In this, again, like not having the photo straight up and down, I want this paper to be roughed up and have that messed up effect as well. So just about ready to um, put those down. But quite happy with how that messed up bit looks. Um, and peeling off some tape there to stick these down. And positioning that as carefully as I can. Um, so I've got that on there. I will tuck in that card uh, in a bit and add some of the embellishments, but I'm just making sure that it all lines up still with the other page. Now I'm going around the edge of these papers and I'm just sort of tucking my finger underneath them to lift it up a little bit um, to sort of curl or roughen the edges. Now you could distress the edges, you could look at inking them, um, you could wet, could have wet them a little bit with our water brushes and that helps to curl them up really easily as well, but I was quite happy with the sort of the white core of the paper peeking through. So I've changed the Picture My Life card from the original wood grain one here because I've used the wood grain paper background. Um, and I'm still going to be adding in the die cuts uh, pretty much in the same place as they were uh, um, in the fast layout example that's in the instructions um, and that I showed you at the very start of this video. So flick back there if you needed to have a look at what that was like. So just playing around with the positioning so that the um, she still stands out, but it still fits with um, this pattern. So getting these finished off. Now I actually used a little bit of foam tape there just to give it a little bit of lift in the end so it wasn't um, sitting completely flat on the page. Now um, I stamped these images before that I um, spoke about from the Simple Florals and from the No Matter sets and I'm just tucking these in behind at various points to add some clusters of interest around the page. So this, um, while this is a double page layout for those of you who like to create single pages, both of them could actually be easily um, standalone separate pages. Uh, if you just add a little bit of a journaling block on this left page here that I'm working on, um, perhaps tucked in under the title or just under the photographs, the photograph here where I have done um, some of the clusters, um, like where I'm just sticking that leaf now, some journaling there would be perfect and it could be a single page layout. Um, and on the right, same thing, except I would probably be looking to put the title or use that die cut um, that's in the, sort of the centre top there as my title. So don't um, think that these patterns are only suitable for um, people who like doing double pages. Uh, they would work beautifully as well for people who like to do the single pages. So just um, positioning these stamps the way I like them so that they feel... Um, feel composed but yet there's an element of um, an element of chaos within the wilderness here. So now I'm going to work on the right hand page. Um, I have matted my photographs um, and again I am going to roughen up that center piece there um, and stick that down. Now I did toy with um, turning this paper around so if you're really averse to using the bears um, this bears paper you could have used the other side of it so it's a very neutral um, sort of a diamondy outdoors kind of fabric is the back side of that so it would work just as well as this um, the bear pattern so the beauty of having these double-sided papers with different patterns on each side are that you can um, use the other side if one particular paper doesn't rock your boat 
So I have layered up these strips. So I've kept the layers sort of the same order as I backed the photograph that's on the left to add a sense of connection and continuity between them. And I'm just going to do these at the top and the bottom of my group of photos and journaling um, or picture my life cards there. So by doing these layers, so I've just, I cut them so that the vellum was, was smaller than the spotty, which was then smaller than the navy blue, so that I can sit them all together uh, under, under here and I'll be able to hide where I joined them, them up. So I've created these two clusters and now I'm going to look at positioning them. So I'm eyeing up here the connection with the photo on the left um, as well as where these are going to sit and working out where um, I'm going to be able to tuck these under so you won't see the glue line. Um, and you can see how I've done that there and I'm just making sure the top one is going to sit right as well and tucking that in behind um, the same position there. So you can see I sort of hovered it over and then removed the photograph so that now I'm able to go back through and stick all of those down, lining them up with the edge of the paper and with kind of the top of the paper on the, of the photograph on the left hand side. Now you could uh, choose not to mat your photographs. I just, I quite like being able to separate the photos out with a bit of a mat behind them. I use the white daisy cardstock to mat these and these are all um, three by four photographs. Um, but you could sit on the left there where there's two three by fours, you could have another four by six photo there and then tuck some smaller photos in um, on the other two slots if you wanted um, or you could even do the photos smaller again and fit more in on this um, on this uh, page so tucking those um, die cuts in there the same as on the fast layout but now adding more of my stamped images so I'm both sticking them down at the base level using the Tombow tape runner but I'm also going to use some foam tape to lift some of them up a little bit higher from the page too. So don't be afraid of adding a little bit of dimension. Um, if you're worried about it, use the thin foam tape because that seems to um, add that little bit of dimension without taking over. So just adding more of the stamped images around here. And it's at this point that I think, oh, I wanted to do some stamping, um, but I'm just going to have to work around the clusters that I've done um, because I did that out of the order that it would have made sense to do it in. So before sticking these clusters down, it would have been ideal to do the stamping that I do with the white daisy pigment pad uh, and um, one of the simple, I think it was from the simple florals set some little sort of um, plus symbols so here we go I am pulling out this stamp with the pigment white and I'm just going to stamp it around on some of these um, areas here just to look make it look like there's something coming out from underneath or under the background so placing those around just to where they look pleasing to the eye um, the these particular wee stamps I think are going to be fabulous for all sorts of pages. The other thing that could have looked quite cool behind um, or on this wood grain background would be some of our white or our um, the clear shimmer brushes or even the gold or the gold shimmer would look quite cool splattered on the background of that wood grain look as well. So just adding a few more. Um, they do smudge a little bit but that's okay. Um, this pigment ink does need um, a bit more drying time than I allowed it. Um, and again, the stamp chamois that we've got is brilliant for keeping these things uh, nice and clean and getting the bits and pieces out. So now I'm going to use some of the silver thread and I'm going to tuck these in behind the photo at different places. So to do this, I'm going to use the glue dots. And so I've stuck one down there and I'm tucking in the silver threads in a bit of a loop that I tied up around my fingers. And to add the connection with the other page, I am going to do a similar thing and tuck it in 
onto the right hand page as well. Um, it just seems to add a bit of a balance. Um, so bot adding that down to the bottom right there just brings it down and connects it in. Um, another place that I um, then put it is just up the top. So I've created a triangle with these loops of the silver thread. And so again, same principle, twisting it around a couple of my fingers and putting a glue dot up the top and tucking it in up there. You can't really see it on the video, but it does add quite a nice dimension. So now I'm also going to add some of the um, clear sparkles and the bitty sparkles up in different places. When I did the fast version of this, I think it was the gold, um, gold sparkles that I added on to that. But I felt that the clear and bitty uh, fitted in beautifully on this. So now it's time to add some journaling. Not quite a few more bits and pieces that I decide. Now I here am using the Waterfall Stickles Glitter Gel on top of um, the foam letters. And I am putting them on here because I just wanted to change the color of the title a little bit. Uh, and, and there we go. So that's what it will look like. And have a look on, um, the instructions for this page and I hope you've enjoyed learning how I went about creating the fabulous version of this layout.